Hi there, I'm Lisa. And I'm Laura. Laura's the camera girl today. So we're working on Willow Lake, this block of the month, and we're now on month 12. You almost made it, we're almost done. So it's the birdhouse block and the quilt top assembly. So, but before we can put the quilt top together, let's finish month 12, the birdhouse block. So the birdhouse block, it has a um, small part that is paper piece. So you're gonna make a 100% copy. I like Carol Doak's newsprint. It just tears away easy, but you could use regular print paper. Just make sure it's 100% size. The outside line should measure five and a half inches. And then you're going to trace the lines. Here's my copy. You're gonna trace the lines on the back side and write the numbers. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just using it for positioning uh, so you don't have to get you know, the ruler out or anything like that. Now, the second thing I like to do is I've cut all my pieces per the instructions on page 28, and I like laying them out as how they're going to be going together for my paper piecing. Uh, and then the other tools you, you're my, you may love, I love this add a quarter inch ruler. You don't have to use an add a quarter of an inch ruler, but it's got a little lip and it really does help when you're trimming um, your seam allowances. I also like a small rotary blade when I do paper piecing. And um, then these nifty pins are my favorite too. Ready to go? So our first step is to get our, our number one piece. We're gonna position it right on the number one. So I'm just gonna stick a little pin. Now with this being black, it doesn't matter if I have my piece right side up or right side down because it's the same. But if you were doing it with any other print, this is the one fabric you'll have right side up. All the other fabrics will be right side down. Our next piece is gonna be number two. So you find your number two position. We're gonna be sewing on that line right between one and two. But you never know where that line is. So here's my trick. So before we position number two, we're gonna pre-cut our seam allowance. So I'm just gonna flip my paper over. I'm gonna find that line between one and two. You use a card, preferably one with a quilt design on the front. Fold it back. Use your add a quarter of inch ruler. And now I just trimmed my quarter of an inch seam allowance. So when I add my second piece, I could line it up right with that quarter of an inch seam and now I can take it to the sewing machine and sew. Now you can add another pin there to hold it in place. A lot of times with these little pieces, it's just as easy to hold it with your fingers. So I'm gonna slide it underneath my sewing machine foot here. Actually, this is Laura's sewing machine. It's as cute as I'll get out. And you're gonna sew just on that line. You're not gonna go past. I like to use a small stitch. And then usually I just hold it just a second. So it almost does a second stitch as a stay stitch. When you position your fabric, you'll want to be sure that you're at least a quarter of an inch on each side of the line. So I was pretty close on that one side, but it'll be good. Okay, I just used my fingernail to press that seam. And now we're ready for number three. It's hard to see that line, so let's pre-cut our seam allowance. So we're repeating the steps that we just did earlier. I'm going to find the line between one and three. Fold my paper back use my add a quarter inch ruler. Now, if you don't have an add a quarter inch ruler, just use a regular ruler. Just be sure your quarter inch line is on that edge of the card. And now I'm ready to add my second piece. And I'm gonna be sure I'm a quarter of an inch. There's about past that line and I'm ready to sew.
Okay, now we're at ready to add number piece four. So four is this one. So I'm gonna flip it over so I can see my line. Use my card, fold it back, and I'm gonna pre-cut my quarter inch seam. And now I'm ready to add piece number four. Making sure I have extended past both sides of that line. And then you flip it over and sew on the other side. That's right. Good. Let's pre-cut this line now. We're on line number five. Looking good. So now we'll go to number six. Now do we want to make it that fast? Mm -hmm. So stop here. All right, I just finished sewing all my paper piecing. So next I'm gonna hit it with the iron so it's nice and flat. And then we're going to trim on this outside line so your square will be five and a half inches. Then I'll give the pattern a little shake, shake, rip to the center line and then tear away the pieces of paper. Once that's trimmed down, then I can sew on my, my post and uh, my birdhouse, or in the top piece, and the birdhouse will be ready for applique. There you go. All righty, look how much progress we're making. So I finished the little house, I sewed on the base, I sewed on the top, and then I sewed on the sides. Now this is oversized, so once the applique is all done and top stitched, then this will be trimmed down to 12 and a half by eight and a half, I believe. Quick, check the direction, see if I'm lying. Here we go. It's always good to have your handy yes. dandy pander, pattern at hand. Eight and a half by 12 and a half. So Laura is working on the applique. She is using the Teflon sheet and a light tablet is over there, but the Teflon sheet's they working can see fine. Through it. I can and see then through once it. the bird is fused and once the flowers are fused, we'll peel those off and put them on this and then Top stitch and it'll be done, just like the other ones. All right, we have our applique pieces all fused, so we're gonna do some top stitching to help uh, define our pieces a bit more, and then we'll trim it down to the eight and a half by 12 and a half. Awesome. And then we can put our quilt top together. Woohoo!